In this video, I will show you why ECS is so efficient. If you are not familiar with ECS, you can see my previous video about this, link in the description. First, you need to understand how regular game objects are organized in Unity. Let's imagine that this class is a game object that can jump, rotate and move. Real game objects are a bit more complicated, so let's keep it simple for this example. In this simulation, you can see how regular game objects interact with memory and CPU. This cells represents memory, and this is our components. When new game object is created, it reserves some place in memory for their components. Components are not always placed side by side. Sometimes there are gaps between them. But in this example, let's look at perfectly placed components. Regular game objects belongs to object-oriented programming approach. Now let's see how this memory cells interacts with the CPU and CPU cache when we want to move game objects. In this example, we iterate over all game objects and change their position based on their speed. For the first iteration of cycle, CPU needs these memory cells. CPU first looks for them in its cache. The required cells are not found in the cache. It's called cache miss. So the cells must be fetched from memory and placed in the cache. But since game object 0 consists of 7 cells and cache line contains 10 cells, additional 3 neighboring cells will be taken from the object 1 to fill the whole cache line. Now CPU can take local transform and move speed components to make some calculations. For the second iteration of cycle, CPU needs local transform and move speed components of the object number one. We have already transform component in the cache, but still miss move speed component. So the second cache line must be filled. And so on. Miss for the object number two. The situation is different for the object number 3. Their components are already in the cache, because it was taken as the neighbor cells for the object number 2. This calls cache hit. CPU can process object 3 instantly. Miss for the object number 4. There is no space in the cache for the object number 5. In this case, the oldest cache line puts the cells back into memory and frees up space. This is called a flush. Cache hit for the object number 6. Miss and flush for the object number 7. Miss and flush for the object number 8. And cache hit for the object number 9. In total, for 10 game objects we have 7 misses, 3 hits and 3 flashes. Now let's compare the same operation with ECS entities. When the first entity is created, the component cells will be arranged roughly like this. It looks like all components are placed in random positions, but it's not right. This is a memory chunk. It designed to hold 16 kilobytes of data. It means that system can reserve place for the components in advance without any gaps. You may ask, what if we want to create another entity? In this case, another chunk will be created and the process repeats. This is what data-oriented design is all about. Now let's reproduce move object operation. First, get local transform component of the entity number 0. This is cache miss, so it will be placed in a cache line with some neighbors. And the same for move speed component. For the entities number 1 and 2, all data is already available in the cache line. So this is cache hit. For the entity number 3, we have cache miss. For the entities 4 and 5, there is a cache hit. And so on.
In total, we have 4 misses, 7 hits and 0 flashes. It is way more efficient than the previous object-oriented example. With this data-oriented design and with help of some other technologies, like Burst Compile, you can easily operate with millions of entities. I will tell you more about this in the next video. So stay subscribed and see you in the next one.